So we want to find out concentrations and mass flows in simple but practically useful steady state situations uh, starting with a slab and without any reaction. So why do we care to know about this? We care to know about this because many practical situations can be approximated as a slab. For example, in this uh, biofilm, this is the biofilm growth of bacteria at the bottom of this biofilm is going to depend on how nutrients uh, diffuse through. Uh, so we want to know how much is the diffusion depending on the diffusivity and the thickness. Another example can be how does oxygen diffuse through this contact lens uh, and how does that um, the amount how does it depend on the thickness or the diffusion coefficient uh, these situations can be approximated as diffusion through a slab where we have high concentration on one side and low concentration on the other side if we can find the amount diffused uh, through this slab, then we can answer these practical situations. So we want to solve for concentration profile and mass flux in a slab that has high concentration on one side and low concentration on the other side. We will always start from the general governing equation now we have three coordinate systems to choose from cartesian cylindrical or spherical the equation shown is for cartesian which is obviously the case here it is not uh, cylindrical or spherical we choose this governing equation and start dropping terms so the first term goes because we are doing a steady state problem when things do not change with time. The second term goes because there is no fluid flowing, there is no velocity through this. There is or could be fluid flowing over this, but that is outside the domain. So our domain over which we are computing is this. So if there is fluid flowing outside, that's not included in the governing equation. So this term also goes to zero. The third term stays because we have a diffusion and then the fourth term, this one, goes because we are not considering any reactions. We are not considering any reactions inside the slab. When we drop these three terms, then we get the governing equation for this problem, which is simply d squared ca over dx squared equal to zero probably the simplest differential equation you have ever solved. Um, as has been discussed uh, in the past, or as you might know, that this is a second order equation. This is a second order equation. And when integrated, we'll have two constants of integration. And therefore, we need two boundary conditions to evaluate those constants of integrations. So these are the concentrations specified at the two faces. So this is the first one, this one, and then this is the second one. Okay. So 
Together with the governing equation and boundary conditions, we now have a complete description of the problem from which we can solve for concentration as a function of position and also get flux. Okay, so we will now solve this simple governing equation together with the two boundary conditions for the slab. So the solution process here is nearly trivial uh, because it's a very simple equation. So if I integrate once, I get uh, this uh, constant of integration. And then if I integrate second time, I get the second uh, constant of integration, which we will these two we will evaluate using the two boundary condition now this process is so simple so trivial here but it is the same process that will follow for more complex uh, situations to solve for these two unknowns then we substitute the the boundary condition so using the first one we get C A one C A one equal to K one times zero plus K two, which means K two equal to C A one. Then we use the second one and we get C A two is equal to K one L plus K two. But K2, we already know, is CA1. So from here, I can find K1 is equal to CA2 minus CA1 over L. And so if I substitute for K1 and K2 in the original solution here, so we write CA is equal to CA2 minus CA1 over L times X plus CA1. So this is my concentration as a function of position. This is the solution to the equation. Now, every time we get a solution, I know it is trivial here now, but it is always useful to make sure that we didn't make any simple alge algebraic mistakes and, and so on. So we should make sure that the solution indeed satisfies the boundary condition. So if you plug in x equal to 0 in this equation, then we get uh, Ca equal to Ca1. If we plug in x equal to L in the equation, then again, we see that we get CA equal to CA2, which are the boundary conditions. So the solution indeed satisfies the boundary condition. Now the solution then says that the concentration profile from high concentration to low concentration is a straight line so straight line is the solution for a slab at steady state okay so we just saw that concentration change so if this is my x-axis and this is concentration of species a plotted against x um, we, we just saw that it will be linear in a slab at steady state. Now we want to find the flux. So mass flux in this case, because it is just pure uh, diffusion, then it is given by the Fick's law. So this is my mass flux. Mass flux 
is given by the Fick's law um, here and and so we simply have to plug in for concentration profile uh, to get the the derivative so we plug in for ca from this equation here and we get this value so which is basically this slope plugged in here okay so we see mass flux is a constant is a constant the flow would be mass uh, flow which is whereas flux is per unit area and the flow is the flux multiplied by the area and so this is the flow so flow is also a constant and notice that these are the um, the flux and the flow they have direction so this subscript here it says species a and in the positive x direction that's what uh, this amount is the mass flux is in the positive this is in the positive x direction okay so after this uh, then why we should look into why these are constants okay so flow if you think of two positions why does the flow have to be the same why does the same amount of coming in as going out this has to be the case it's because otherwise it will not be at steady state if more comes in than goes out then there's going to be mass accumulated in here and therefore mass concentration here will increase with time which is not steady state so that is the reason the same amount of mass flow uh, has to happen at two uh, different location two different positions of x now the flux is per unit area so this is the amount going in per unit area that is also a constant that is only true for a slab because the area is same here as here so if the amount coming in is the same then amount per unit area is also the same in these two cases we will see that in other geometries the flux the amount per unit area will not be the same okay back to this mass flow we can now rewrite this equation as uh, ca1 minus ca2 over l over daba and this is just like heat transfer and we can now interpret the denominator as the diffusive resistance so we can think of mass flow as the driving force which is the concentration gradient mass flow is the concentration gradient uh, divided by the resistance this is the concentration difference that's the driving force and this is the resistance notice how this resistance parallels what's in heat transfer so in heat in heat the resistance was l l over k a l over k a and so the k got replaced by this d a b okay so to apply the simple solution for a slab that we just learned we pick the world's simplest problem which is we have a biofilm this is a biofilm and nutrients are diffusing through the biofilm 
to the bacteria here on this surface and we are asked to find the rate of transport of these nutrients through the biofilm. So rate of transport of nutrients through this biofilm and we have been told to use the slab geometry. So this is diffusion through a slab with constant concentrations at the two boundaries of the slab. These are the two boundaries of the slab. And, and so we have constant concentrations. So this situation matches exactly the one we did. So we can simply use the solution so we write flux is equal to minus diffusivity times concentration gradient. Note that because the flux is constant at any layer, I can simply write the flux in terms of the two concentrations at the end, C2 and C1, um, this way. Okay, and so this is the, cons the flux of the reactant in the positive x direction. So this is, this formula gives in the positive x direction. So this is in the positive x direction only. And so let's plug in my... Uh, values and and this diffusivity is given for me and the two concentrations are uh, c2 is 3.5 so c2 is higher and then c1 is lower and so and then we have some unit conversion and this L, this thickness is 0 0.01 centimeter. So if I plug in all these numbers, you notice that I get my flux, which is the amount, this is the milligram of the reactant per unit area. So if we think of um, if we think of like area like that, uh, so it's per unit of that area per unit time. That's the flux. But notice there is a negative sign. And why is that? Remember the flux equation written as is gives me in the positive x direction. So which means this is the amount that is going in the positive x direction. So because it's negative, what this means is flux is really going in the other direction, which makes sense because this concentration is higher than this concentration. Okay, so then the equation gives me flux always in the positive x direction and the way we use it is minus D and, and the concentration at the point ahead, which is C2 minus the concentration at the point um, close by, which is C1. And, and that just leads to, that just gives us a consistent uh, direction all the time. So if we start from this equation with the negative sign, we will always be okay. We don't need to worry about whether the concentration is higher at one point or lower another, uh, at one point. That will automatically be taken care of. 